Diet soda is gonna give you atrial fibrillation. What's up guys? We're back with another educational video. This week we're talking about diet sodas. Do they give you atrial fibrillation? But first, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for the algorithm. So a new paper got published and got a ton of press as per usual with anything involving artificial sweeteners and diet soda. So they were looking at people who consumed high amounts of artificially sweetened beverages, versus people who took in fruit juice, versus people who just drank sugar-sweetened beverages. And what they found was that over two liters per week of diet soda intake or artificially sweetened beverage intake was associated with a significantly greater risk of atrial fibrillation. Now, a lot of people were freaking out about this, but the reality is there's a lot of confounding variables in this study because it is an epidemiology study. And if we look at what the authors said in terms of their explanation, I don't think it really makes sense, but let's, let's back up a bit. So first of all, one of the big confounding variables here is we know that people who are more overweight or obese are more likely to drink diet soda. And in fact, we see that that is the case. People who drank artificially sweetened beverages actually had higher body mass index than people who were drinking sugar sweetened beverages in terms of from the, from the non-consumers to the highest level of consumers, they had a greater incidence of diabetes, type two I believe, and they were more likely to have lower rates of physical activity and more likely to drink more alcohol. So actually amongst people who drank sugar sweetened beverages, so regular soda, they had decreasing levels of alcohol intake slightly as they increased their level of sugar sweetened beverages. People who were drinking artificially sweetened beverages had increasing levels of alcohol intake. There's a lot of confounding variables in here. Now they said they covariated out these variables and covariation is a way that you can account for some of these uh, confounding variables when you're doing statistics. But I'm sorry, you cannot covariate out like a dozen things. Like uh, you can, stats people will argue with me, but I, I strongly disagree that you could just covariate out everything. The other issue is caffeine intake. Caffeine has been shown to be a risk factor for atrial fibrillation, but again, you know, they didn't assess whether these were caffeinated or uncaffeinated beverages, and it would have been hard to tell, you know, even the sugar sweetened beverages could have caffeine in them as well. So it's possible that there was a difference in caffeine intake, but it's hard to know and we can't really lay that at their feet. Now, I think the interesting portion of this is, again, people who drink diet soda are actually more likely to be overweight or obese, not because it causes them to be overweight or obese, but because they're more likely to attempt to diet and they will use diet sodas as a tool during that. So they're already at a higher risk of atrial fibrillation because obesity raises the risk of atrial fibrillation. Now, one of the things that was interesting was that they said that the two plausible mechanisms they saw were an increase in insulin resistance and vagus nerve stimulation. Now, here's the problem with that. We know that in studies where people drink diet soda in place of regular soda, they actually get improvements in insulin sensitivity because they lose body weight. They actually saw a higher risk of atrial fibrillation in people drinking the artificially sweetened beverages versus those drinking the sugar sweetened beverages. How do you explain that? Because if insulin resistance and vagal nerve stimulation is possibly driving this increased risk of atrial fibrillation, then the sugar sweetened beverages should have a higher risk because they're gonna contribute much more to insulin resistance and they will also have the vagal nerve stimulation, whereas artificial sweeteners are just gonna have the vagal nerve stimulation. So that doesn't really make sense for an explanation because you're seeing the results go reverse of what they should be based on that particular mechanism that they're proposing. And I also looked at, they were assessing relative risk, okay? So it's important to understand relative risk. So it was about a 20% increased relative risk. Now, that sounds scary, but if we look at the absolute risk, so the absolute risk in this population of atrial fibrillation was 4.6%. That went to 5.1% amongst people who consume more than two liters of artificially sweetened beverages per week. Doesn't sound nearly as scary. Now again, it is a 20% relative risk increase because if you increase 4.6 by 20%, you get 5.1. But again, a lot of people freak out about this stuff because they're thinking it goes from a risk of 4.6 to 24.6, and that is not how relative risk works. So again,
based on the fact that this is epidemiology, based on the fact that there's a lot of confounding variables here, based on the fact that their own mechanism that they listed as plausible doesn't make sense based on the differences that they had between sugar sweetened beverages and the artificially sweetened beverages, uh, and the fact that we can't equate for caffeine intake, I don't really know what to make of this. I think it's worth having some better designed long-term cohort studies and examining this, but I don't really know what to make of this. I think that these are quite frankly data artifacts and if you have hundreds of thousands of pieces of data and you dig through enough of them, you can find risk increases for weird stuff. Now, I, I'm not trying to totally dismiss it. I'm not saying it was a poor analysis or anything like that. I'm just saying that based on the limitations and the confounding variables, you cannot say that artificial sweeteners are going to cause atrial fibrillation. Uh, what you can say is that people who are more likely to drink artificially sweetened beverages may be at higher risk for atrial fibrillation, but that's probably because of insulin resistance and higher body weight. I very much doubt it is due to the artificial sweeteners. If you guys are sick and tired of the headlines in the media and social media confusing you when you just feel like you got it figured out, make sure you subscribe to my research review reps. Every month we break down five studies that are popular in nutrition and training and fitness and we break them down in a way that's palatable and easy to understand. We talk about what they tested, how they tested, why they tested it, who they tested on, what they found, and then we tell you what their interpretation of the results were, and then we give you our opinion of their results. We also give you practical takeaways that you can apply. So if you're looking to cut through the BS and up-level your knowledge, click the link in the description and sign up for reps.